Banking Collapse, Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman. Morgan Stanley, an investment management and financial services firm, is the oldest bank in the U.S. and has been instrumental in creating financial policies in the United States. Gorman is now predicting a second Great Recession and possibly a depression is upon us as the company released its investment research forecast for 2023. The report is very detailed and paints a dire picture of the economy. This impending crisis will look entirely different from the last, and it would be wise for us to take heed of its warning signs as they are very serious and leading up to an inevitable global economic catastrophe. Hello and welcome to another video of Finance Sense, where we cover all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. Before we start, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below if you enjoyed watching this video, and turn on the notification bell to keep posted. And now, without further ado, let's start. Now that inflation has shown its wrath and the Federal Reserve has begun to reduce the amount of free money in our economy, we have been staring toward the prospect of a recession for months. Yet, many individuals have simply been dismissing this reality, saying everything is okay, the economy is strong rather than sluggish, and the second tech bubble is guaranteed to provide wealth to anyone and everyone investing in Bitcoin and Tesla. However, in reality, the world's most prominent and influential financial organizations have already begun to inform us of what is about to happen. Recently, Morgan Stanley has been raising the alarm and alerting everyone to what is going to happen. The second Great Recession is upon us, and warning signals are once again beginning to show. What we choose to do with this knowledge is up to us, but it is essential that we are aware of what is taking place. To give you some context, Morgan Stanley is a massive international company that employs more than 80,000 people full-time. They are valued at over $160 billion and have branches in every town or city you can think of. And they also handle $1.1 trillion in assets. These institutions regularly disseminate information briefs to their most valuable clients and shareholders, detailing the state of the globe, their company, and their predictions for the future. The recent release of Morgan Stanley's investment forecast for 2023 contains important information that should not be ignored. One of their main points is that stock investors would reflect on 2022 and conclude it didn't turn out as bad as it felt at times. This is somewhat logical because when 2022 began, we were swamped with headlines claiming that it was the worst year to invest in stocks since the global financial or the worst start to a year in 50 years of markets. Now, both of these statements are correct. Throughout 2022, assets generally underperformed despite a few strange incidents. Bear traps or small bull runs occurred when stocks rose for seven or even eight weeks at a time, and when December eventually ended, the S&P 500 was only down by approximately 20% or 30% when inflation was considered. However, most people believed it would be more severe than it actually was based on the headlines, which included the outbreak of the worst conflict in Europe since World War II, the rapid increase of gas prices which led to an energy crisis throughout the globe, and China's draconian COVID-19 policies locking down hundreds of millions of civilians after 20 COVID cases were discovered. As a result, equity investors in early 2023 were fairly optimistic, with many believing that the inflation risk had passed and had been contained by the Fed, so a recession would be averted as well. In fact, Morgan Stanley knew this was going to happen before it did. They stated that investors would say, it wasn't nearly as horrible as it felt at times. They also believed these individuals were overconfident and had unrealistic expectations that everything would work out wonderfully. Now, Morgan Stanley is paying close attention to the recent inversion of yield curves. For those unfamiliar, this pertains to bond yields and how, typically, the longer the bond period, the greater the yield on that bond to accommodate for long-term inflation. Nevertheless, bond yields reverse direction when a recession is looming because investors anticipate a cut in interest rates from central banks that are trying desperately to stimulate the economy. 
As a result, the return on longer-term bonds is lower than that of shorter-term bonds. This is something that is happening everywhere right now. The yield on a 10-year treasury is currently 3.37%, whereas the yield on a 2-year treasury was 4.06% as of late January. This indicates that the markets are pricing in a recession, and this warning has never been inaccurate since 1978. The only issue is that while this is an excellent sign for warning us when a downturn is approaching, it is not particularly efficient in providing an actual date for the arrival of a recession. As opposed to the short 10 months that passed between the inversion and the subsequent recession in 1980, 2006 had a far longer interval of 22 months. In its outlooks, Morgan Stanley states that while they were certain a recession is on the way, it might take a few more months to materialize. The economy is holding up too well, so the expected drop in earnings will have to wait for another quarter. They anticipate a decline in corporate earnings in 2023, but not a complete collapse, as that will probably occur during the next six months. This, however, will exacerbate the crash when it happens. All of this is perhaps due to consumer savings. The majority of Americans loaded up on cash during the pandemic, and while inflation and layoffs have already been gnawing away at their pockets, they have simply continued to spend at high levels and depleted their savings. Americans now save less than they did during the height of the global economic crisis. In fact, it is on track to reach the lowest level since the Great Depression, which was over a century ago. When those savings run out, which will most likely happen in 2023, the economy's spending will abruptly stop, triggering the impending crisis. Morgan Stanley also mentioned a few other significant issues they are keeping an eye on. They are concerned about the increasing rate at which the United States government takes antitrust action against tech companies like Google and Apple. Most notably, the Department of Justice has gone after Google for its monopoly on the online advertising industry. Meanwhile, Morgan Stanley is simultaneously advancing two distinct strategies. According to Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley's top U.S. equity strategist and global chief investment officer, corporate profit projections are still excessively high despite recent drops, and their stock risk premium is at its lowest since the 2008 economic crisis. This indicates that during the past 15 years, equities have never been as risky or offered such a low prospective return. It had never been this bad until just before the fall of the Lehman Brothers, a hundred other banks, and the greatest bailouts in history. Wilson said that while the consensus may be inaccurate in terms of magnitude, it may be accurate in terms of direction. This means that when equities do fall, they do so much more quickly and dramatically than the markets anticipate. Mike suggests that a 20% collapse in the S&P 500 over the coming several months is a strong probability. He is only uncertain about when this mayhem will begin and when investors will finally acknowledge that the recession is severe. As per Mike Wilson, it will occur in the first quarter of 2023. On the other hand, Morgan Stanley has been years ahead of the curve both during and before this terrible market. They were one of the very few banks that were upfront with their clients about their forecast for 2023 back in October when they announced that the world economy had entered a global recession. They have been claiming that they are prepared to reduce costs when the recession truly hits since July of last year. James Gorman, chief executive officer of Morgan Stanley, said, If things really deteriorated, particularly in the U.S., then we take a much more aggressive position. And we obviously have the ultimate weapon, which is comp. They anticipated the recession and took preventative action by laying off 1,600 employees in December to protest the company's stability. This is only 2% of their workforce and is far lower than the 10 to 20% layoffs that many tech businesses have been implementing. Nevertheless, this is happening even when the company is apparently doing well. They think everything will suddenly collapse, so they're making their escape now. Although we are repeatedly warned not to try to time the markets and instead to keep all of our cash invested, despite the steady decline of stock prices, the fact remains that no one can predict what will happen in any given period with any degree of certainty. Yet contrary to what these experts would have you think, predicting recessions has always been simpler. All you need to do is open your eyes and pay attention to what the data is saying. 
Knowing when something will happen rather than what will happen is challenging, but it is only imperative if you engage in risky activities like shorting or trading with leveraged options. Hi, we hope that watching this video was interesting and that you learned something valuable. If you enjoyed it, please hit the notification button, like, subscribe, and watch more of our videos. Also, don't forget to share your comments in the comment section below. This is Finance Sense, helping you stay current on all the most recent changes in the financial markets and economy. Stay safe and look out for the next video.